The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to Chit Chatting. I'm Jocelyn Davis, and I have my co-host Karen Testerman with me today. And uh, we're going to be doing a few different subjects and talking about how you, how we, can choose wisely on a number of topics. And just to make sure you're absolutely 100% clear on this, Karen Testerman is declared and running for governor. Welcome to the show, Ms. Karen. Oh, well, thank you, Ms. Jocelyn. It's so <laughs> great to be here again and, and lots of fun. And, um, oh, by the way, I choose to live free. And uh, this is a, a special book that I put together primarily because we need to know our rights. And, we, and if we don't know our rights, we don't we, have any. We don't have any, correct. And those are in our New Hampshire Constitution as well as in the uh, federal constitution, and there are some differences, and there are things that the federal constitution say belong to the states, and those rights that, that are not enumerated in those two documents are left to you and me. And so we need to, we need to know what those rights are, and we need to claim them, and we need to uh, make sure that we get them. So if you're interested in one of those books, just contact me at karentesterman.com, and uh, we can make that kind of thing happen. Exactly. So, yeah. And we also, while we're on the subject, funny that we walked in with our books, there's also the New Hampshire Constitution, which again, you can get from uh, Committees of Safety New Hampshire from KarenTesterman.com. Um, I carry a, a number of them around with us. These are printed by the state, um, paid for by you and me with our tax dollars. And um, it's a nice size. It's nice and big. And it tells you Everything you need to know, the Constitution of, of the state of New Hampshire. As, as Karen had said, there's a Constitution of the United States. There's also a Constitution of New Hampshire. You need to know the Constitution of New Hampshire if you are a citizen of New Hampshire. It's, it's very, you know, very easy to understand and you can look it up. There's also, you need to know, um, the Declaration of Independence, this one happens to be put out by Hillsdale College, uh, and this has the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. Um, there, as Karen said, there are differences. You need to know both. And the states are sovereign, and we do have rights um, that are specific to the state. Well, what's really interesting in the difference is that if you look at the federal constitution, we have 10 Bill of Rights, 10 amendments are, that are in the Bill of Rights that were insisted upon by the colonies before they would sign on mm -hmm. and ratify that constitution. But in the New Hampshire Constitution, guess ooh, how ooh, many? Ooh, ooh. 39. Very good. We have 39 in part one, which is the Bill of Rights of the people of New Hampshire. And it's very specific. It tells you who can vote. It tells you what you have to do to participate as a citizen. And it's up to you to know what they are so that you have rights. Right. And technically, and I know this flies around and people say, oh, it's a conspiracy theory or all you, you know, the nutcase is talking about it. But if you read the Constitution of the United States. The federal Constitution does not give you the right to vote. The Constitution of New Hampshire gives you the right to vote. This, the um, Constitution of New Hampshire also states very clearly you must be a citizen. You must be born here. You must have... Um, Property. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, what Daniel and my mother did. Naturalized. Um, new, na thank you. Naturalized citizen. And there's a third one. You swear an oath well, to become the citizen right. of, the, of the state of New Hampshire, right. which I did. Right. Which um, 
Jocelyn was born in D.C., so she was a United States citizen, but not necessarily a New Hampshire citizen. Right. I was born in Denver, Colorado, and grew up in California, actually didn't know about this. And what was really fascinating, and Daniel explained it beautifully uh, on a previous show, but I didn't know that we were treated like individual countries, mm -hmm. and we then established the United States Constitution because we wanted to be able to conduct our businesses across the lines mm -hmm. from New Hampshire to Massachusetts to Maine, whatever it might be. And we wanted to be respected back and forth, but we needed somebody or a body that was going to oversee and make sure that those rules were consistent. So that's how we came together to form the United States Constitution. And also, as a group of, of uh, colonies, we wanted our, bound, our borders to be protected from Correct. other countries. And so that was another reason for the protection. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was is that uh, traveling from one community to the next, from Virginia up to New Hampshire or uh, vice versa, you needed roads. You needed path, passages and so forth. And that's there's been a variety of things they've done over the years as far as who pays for it. Mm -hmm. But it was the, uh, the, over, the government that we were asking to oversee that. Those three things. Yeah, those yes. th three things. Which, strangely enough, as you know what I'm going to come back to, is that the taxes, the federal taxes, you're only supposed to pay for three things, which is... Trade, infrastructure, and defense. Yes. Which are the exact same three things that you just mentioned why we actually had a Constitution of the United States. Correct. Now, being a citizen of New Hampshire, um, a, a subject near and dear to your heart that popped up on your computer today, civics. Oh, yes. Civics, which is why we talk about this. Right. It is supposed to be taught from eighth grade till high school. You are to understand the Declaration, the Constitution. You are to understand civics inside out and backwards. You are to be able to pass the test. The school must teach you this course. Yes, because I went back and I was surprised because many of the laws in New Hampshire having to do with schools do not necessarily mandate it. Mm -hmm. Because if they mandate it, then it's expected to be paid for. Well, they already pay for the Constitution of New Hampshire to be printed, so they can ex basically uh, have your already. Textbook. Yeah, there's your textbook, and so it says amazingly in one eighty nine colon eleven. Get it out. Go to go to Gen Court G E N C O U R T dot U S dot N H uh, dot, I, I'm sorry, gencourt.state.nh.us. If you look that up on your uh, search engine, it'll take you to the uh, legislative page of New Hampshire. And right there in front of you, one of the first things at the top is the laws and rules of New Hampshire. And you click on that and you can go in and now find where it says browse and look for 189 colon 11. And you can read it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. But the fascinating thing that I found today was that it says very specifically, not you will, not you might, not you may, but you shall. Shall is a very specific, word. you must do it. It is yep. a requirement of the state of New Hampshire that you shall teach civics and history and the constitutions of both the United States and the state of New Hampshire and the Declaration of Independence. And you shall make sure that you have a curriculum for it mm -hmm. and you shall test or assess at the end of and report to the Department of Education the results. I don't know of a school system that's doing this and it says all schools, so that means public and private, mm -hmm. and 
uh, homeschoolers, that applies to you as well. So now it's up to us to go to our school boards, go to our, our, uh, our uh, private schools and say, I want to see your, your curriculum on this. Mm -hmm. Show it to me. Yeah. There's no reason why they can't pull it out with all the ancillaries, with any of the videos that they're going to show and everything else so that you can see that they are really presenting the true history and civics of the state of New Hampshire and the United States of America. Absolutely. But Absolutely. it's up to us. We, That's a choice that we have to make. It's not up to somebody else. Right. It's up to us. It's up to us. Uh, which leads us into the, uh, the next conversation. Um, you and I both watched a video with Dr. Artis. Artis. A-R-D-I-S. D-I-S. I always want to put an M in there for some reason. It's something to do with the three musketeers. <laughs> but Artemis. So Dr. Artis. Artis. See, I, I, I wanted to go right to the three musketeers. And um, he did an interview at Bard's Fest, I yes. believe. And which was this past weekend. It was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Missouri. And we had a version of it ourselves here on Saturday. Yes. We uh, did. God and Country. In, in Wyndham. In Wyndham, New Hampshire. And it was fabulous. We had um, music. We had gospel music. We had patriotic music. We had food. We had fun. We had shofars. We had, sh yes. Right. Professional shofars. shofars come in and... Oh, my word. Because I have to tell you, it's hard. I have a little shofar. <laughs> These people have the one that wraps around their arm. It's really cool. And, um, and my husband said, you need one of those big ones. And so anyway, <laughs> but it's like blowing a trumpet mm -hmm. because you have, to, you have to purse your lips in a certain way in order to make the sounds. And then in order to make the sounds, you don't have, there's no... Um, Little valves or anything yeah. like that to adjust the sound you do it with your lips and it's quite Ooh. fascinating how they do it and it takes some practice to make it but they were beautiful it was they it was absolutely it's a amazing. very unique sound oh yeah it's yeah. a very unique sound so um we blew shofars mm -hmm. we had a great time daniel educated us about um our citizenship and how we become a citizen of the state of I think we had 50 individuals become citizens right that then and there. That was awesome. Yep, yeah. swore the oath, and uh, we had um, the notaries there to notarize it, so the, very Oh, here's, here's the story, though, to beat all, because if you don't think this was something that was uh, to honor God, but also where God was involved. So uh, uh, the church has had this tent out oh, in the back. Yes. Uh, it is a permanent tent, but they have been trying to get permission for occupancy from the town of Wyndham for 90 days. Now, come on, my husband sits on the, on the zoning and the uh, planning board, and it doesn't take 90 days to get an approval for something. No. And anyway, they spent quite a bit of money making sure that the, the ground was proper and all of that. Well... So uh, Holly, who was the one that was, has been really an amazing organizer of this, yeah. all of this, Holly was meeting with uh, two of the people who were supposed to be providing security. And uh, uh, all of a sudden, or one of the guys was from the church, and then the, uh, uh, Keith Hansen was there for security, and Holly was there to, uh, because she was the primary organizer. And they were standing there talking about what needed to be done and so forth. And they get this phone call. And it's this town. They want to know if there is a specific, and I, um, I don't know what the name of it was, but a specific certificate of, uh, to be up for security. And did, did our security person have that? And this was the town of Wyndham trying to throw out that last little thing that was going to be an impediment to the whole uh, this whole fest event, yeah, this festival, the the event taking yep. place, the church being able to use it, what uh, on their own property, by the way, um, and they it was supposed to be an impediment. Well, 
did Keith not only have the certificate, <laughs> he teaches the certificate. I love so it. So it was so awesome. So at, at the uh, midnight hour, so to speak, the, uh, the town gave permission to, to the church beautiful so that we could use it on Saturday. It was just absolutely yep. thank you for uh, divine intervention at that point. Absolutely. And thank you for all the people involved because it's certainly... <sighs> Having the right people there at the right time, it was an amazing it feat. It was an amazing feat, too, because one of the other things that was going on is that we have people all over the state who want to have election integrity. Mm -hmm. They want us to be able to go to the polls because that is our voice. Uh, that is the last ability of ours mm -hmm. to be able to have our, our voices heard. Correct. So that we... The people who we elect are there representing each one of us. Uh, if our, our elections aren't honest, there's no reason for us to have first in the nation status. If our elections aren't honest, we can't even know that the person that we're, uh, who's making decisions for our communities are legitimate. Correct. Or for our schools, are they really legitimate? If Correct. They, if the if each one of our votes doesn't count or doesn't matter. Right. So there are several different groups, and I was amazed because they all had a different approach, and they were all under the same tent, mm -hmm. and they nobody got their noses bent out of shape or anything else. They were all invited to come and participate in their, even though their ultimate goal is the same. Correct. They want to get rid of the machines, mm -hmm. and they want honest voting for everybody. Right. And yet, hey, guys, we can all get along, and we can all have a different approach. Yep. And somebody, it, it, it was just, it was beautiful the way it, it all beautiful. went together. It was. It certainly was. So um, in our last ooh, nine and a half minutes, we're going to dive in where we're not supposed to dive in, where social media and everybody don't like us to go, but we're going there because that's what we do. So the Dr. video that Artis. we watched, Dr. Artis, brings some really hard-hitting truths. And it's disturbing. going- Disturbing. For five-year-olds, five to 11-year-olds are being targeted. Right. So and I'm gonna use that word, targeted for the flu vaccine this year. So let's back up just a yeah. little bit because what Dr. Artis said, and you can go watch the video yourself, it's on Rumble, uh, and it's uh, Dr. Artis presents shocking news. But um, so what he basically presented was that there has been an alert sent to all of hospitals. the hospitals around the country to expect this fall an outbreak of what they acute, call acute flaccid, fa uh, flaccid myelitis. myelitis. Mm -hmm. And it is a polio-like paralysis. paralysis. So the children lose the use of their limbs, just like back in the day, can lo lose, paralyze their face and their limbs. Yeah. And they know about this and they've put warnings out. Right. And it's it's on the uh, the Center for Disease Control website. website. Mm -hmm. So, he, as he was talking through this vi uh, this uh, video, I was saying, "Oh, okay." One of the things that I do is, you say that you got it such and such a place. Okay, let me go see. So I went to the CDC website, and lo and behold, there it was. The this little chart was on, on it. Mm -hmm. And it showed, at, just as he said, it, they say every two years, but in reality, it occurs every, every year. year. But mm -hmm. there were spikes yep. in 2014 when they first started tracking this in 2016, 2018. And then they expect that this year there's going to be a major outbreak. Mm -hmm. Now, how long have they actually known about this uh, particular... Mm. I think a very long time. Well, yes. So the public health dispatch on the CDC website 
says acute flaccid paralysis associated with circulating vaccine-derived polio virus was discovered in the Philippines in 2001. Mm -hmm. So they'd known about this for a long, long time. How can Ten they year, project? Uh, 20 years, excuse me. Yeah. How can they project that we're going to have an outbreak when they really started in 2001, but they didn't really start tracking it until, until 2014. 2014? Is there a little lapse there? Lapse mm. there, yeah. Things are, so he was asking some very important questions, in my opinion. One of them was, the CDC has a schedule of when our children are supposed to receive certain vaccinations. And that's usually by their birth date, by their age. Set by their birthday and age, right. And you can go, you can go onto the CDC website mm -hmm. and it'll show you what that is. However, there's one vaccine that they, uh, that is only administered during a certain time of the year. Correct. The flu vaccine. August, September, October, October November is, uh, is, is three months. Yep. When they, that's when you are to receive your flu vaccine. Mm-hmm. So now he was putting together this fact that, that the hospitals have been warned that in August, September, October, they can expect to see an increase in these children's, um, uh, what is it, the acute flaccid, flaccid myelitis, myelitis polio-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be able to start seeing a spike. They're, in this. they're going to see, and I believe they said the spike would continue to increase from November through December. Sixty percent of the children will listen to this. Sixty percent of the children will recover within a year. Forty percent of the children will not recover, and that means paralysis of the legs, Disability. arms, mm -hmm. sides of your face. face. And oh, guess what? What does it sound like? Guillain-Barré. Guillain yes. It sounds just like Guillain-Barré symptoms. That if you look at the definition of what Guillain-Barré is, uh, it, it says it's rare, first of all. It's very supposed to rare. be very rare. Yep. However, with certain inoculations of late, they, it's become more common. Mm -hmm. It is a rare disorder where the body's immune system damages nerves. The damage to the nerves causes muscle weakness and sometimes paralysis. While its cause is not fully understood, the syndrome often follows infection with a virus or bacteria. Each year in the United States, an estimated 3,000 to 6,000 people develop Gian Barre symptoms. Most people fully recover, but some have permanent nerve damage, hence your paralysis. And so the vaccine manufacturers mm -hmm. are now going to the federal... Um, the CDC, because that's where they purchase No, they're, all they're going to the FDA, the Federal FDA? Oh. Uh, Drug Administration, okay. for permission oh, okay. to have a uh, not an experimental, um, well, for for permission to the emergency, approve. The emergency youth authorization. Not the, not the emergency authorization, right. right. The emergency use authorization, this was really fascinating. App actually just allows them to continue to use this, but they don't have to tell you what the ingredients are. Correct, so, so what, Moderna, what vaccine can start, at, start, off, start yeah. out as six months ago, a year ago, is not where it is now. They can change the ingredients and not have to report right. them. So is that the, correct? So, yeah. yeah. So perhaps President Trump, when he got his vaccine in the beginning, when Moderna only had two patented elements in it, mm -hmm. is going to be different from what somebody today is going to get because they've added something like another five ingredients. We don't know what it is. Because it's emergency use, use authorization. authorization. But... If they authorize it, which they just did mm -hmm. for Pfizer, for Pfizer, 
That means that Pfizer has 14 days from the date of the authorization to give them all of the ingredients. Mm -hmm. And this is what must be in that literature that accompanies anything. Correct. That Which is now doing. currently blank. Which is, yeah, it's currently blank, but they probably by the end of this week or so, they have to have that printed and it has to be, it can't change now. Mm -hmm. So that that's fascinating to me that that is what was going on here. That's why it's important to know that they did approve it. Mm -hmm. They now, it's no longer experimental use. But for the five to 11 year olds, it is. It is experimental. It's still experimental. So what oh is it they're going to be putting into our five-year-olds and why? What is going on? Why would anybody, with this whole mantra, I'm going to go out on the limb and say it, mantra, and I'm not being uh, I'm uncaring, of the children, the children, the children, our grandchildren, our ch you know, future generations, yeah. when 40%, they are stating up front, 40% of the children will be left with a permanent disability. Who does that? Yeah, I know. Why? Why? Why would you want to incapacitate our children? It the just future breaks, the future of our country. It breaks my heart. And I and there are no words to describe this kind of action mm -hmm. except that I hope that in the end, I mean this is like Nuremberg Yes. Right? The Nuremberg Code said you cannot give people something without informed consent. Correct. Where's Knowing the what the ingredients consent? are, you know, and... Um, so the bottom line is the do not get your children vaccinated. Whether, I don't care what it says at the schools that you have to do this, that, or the other. Any, do your research. To, do your research. Read do what those not, are. Do not let your children be vulnerable to any of this especially with this polio like vaccine do oh, your yeah. research talk to your doctors go to the cdc website look this up it's all there this is this don't listen to us listen to the experts and what's out there and if you want to follow dr artis it's dr artis um a-r-d-i-s just look him up and see what you what he has to say and see if, if there are other doctors out there who are saying yep. similar things save the children is multi-layered at this point very multi-layered so. save the children thanks for having me on again thank you all right we will see you next week jocelyn and karen back at you with chit-chatting the preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.